a little more red and orange. I'm going to go up and make the top a little bit redder just by kind of going over what we already have there. And then we're going to make the bottom part a little cooler. See, I'm kind of feathering because I don't want a whole lot of bright color down in this little canyon area right there. Yeah, just kind of dry brush over it and take your finger and kind of smush it in there a little. Now, smushing is a word. I, don't, I know because I invented it, I think. I'm not really sure if smushing is in the dictionary, but it's a good word for this because all you do is kind of smush it together and see, blend it into the little pores of the canvas. That's a great way to kind of blur and blend and create these little subtle value changes. See how cool that is? It just creates that nice little set, almost like a foggy effect. Now, down here in this section right here, there's a little more white and it's a little grayer. So you can take a little bit of the gray, take the white, and uh, not quite as much orange in this one. <clears throat> Maybe a touch more yellow. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now see, it's going to come right on down. It also has a horizontal effect to it, but it's just a different color. So it kind of falls in line with what we got going here in terms of the shape. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. You can put a little bit of that color up on this one. This one has a little bit of that yellow color up here. And what we've done up until now is just kind of block things in and sort of underpaint. Now we're actually going back to what we call the refinement phase of the painting, where we just simply go in and we look for areas that need a little more finishing, a little detail, maybe some darks and lights and all the things that make this come alive. Really fun to watch it develop. Okay, let's go over to this little middle section now. We have this color on our brush that's sort of a yellowish muddy color. It's really not a very pretty color, but it looks good on a painting like this. Now we just go through and we just go ahead and just locate these little areas and begin to shape this up. Now this one's going to have a little more pink and red in it. stays in shadow mostly in here, although you can scrub a little bit in there and smush that in and give it just a little color but no detail. Now I want to get this one pretty red because this is the one that's kind of close to us, but notice how many deep, dark pockets I'm leaving that gives it that real depth within. Now, that's the inner negative space I was talking about last week. The shape around an object, the space you see, is called outer negative space. The inner negative space is what gives a, the object its character from within. So there's two types of negative space there. Now I'm going to take the orange and the red, and we're going to make this a little brighter. See, this has got a lot of this, almost like a stair step effect right here. This is what's so fun about this kind of painting because when you know where to leave the proper spaces of darkness, then it looks really correct. I mean, you don't have to go back and add it. That's what's good about this because you can just go in there and play with this. Leave the front part detail, the settled side, side part shadow, no detail, and then it looks a lot more dimensional. Plus, remember, we've got a backlighting situation here. What that means is your highlight or your sun, or whatever your light source is, is from the rear of the object. <coughs> a few little horizontal lines here and there, just to kind of break this up. Some areas it's a little more solid. Okay, now one thing I want to do is go back to some darks real quick here. So let's rinse your brush out real good. Let's take a little burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, just this gray. 
and maybe a little purple. I want to darken a couple of things here. Get plenty of water in there. Get it nice and creamy. Now let's go up here and I'll show you where we're going to darken. I want to go ahead and adjust this, make this a little darker. And give it just a little different shape on the back side. Because see, this has to stand out really forward. Okay, there we go. Then I want this little section here on this front one to be a little, also to have a little darker, better shape. It's going to come out and overlap like that. A good time to make any adjustments that you need to make with the darks. And kind of drag a little bit of this dark down into the snow in a few places. Okay, I see little by little it's all falling into place. All right. Yeah, shaping up. Okay, now very quickly, we're going to put our first layer of highlight on our snow, and this will start getting everything kind of tied together as a unit. Now, just take your the same brush. Okay, now the color that we're going to use for this, this snow is not going to be what some of you might think. It's going to be sort of a grayish white. So what you want to do is take your gesso, a little bit of this gray, and a little bit of orange, and you see you'll create sort of a dull color. It's much lighter than your underpainting, but you don't want it to be too bright yet. That We do snow in two or three different stages. So you see that nice color right there? Now let's go up here and test it first. Okay. Now see up here, if I can get them to close in, see you can see how light that is against this dark background. Well, it looks really uh, dark down there on your palette, but up here it looks darker, I mean brighter. So what you want to do now is take this color and you start the process of building these little mounds of snow. See, I'm scumbling and scrubbing here. This is really fun to do, but you have to feather it. And then you kind of work your way up into the, the crevices of the mountains here. See, that's a very, it looks really whitish up here, but down there on your palette it doesn't. That's an optical illusion. That's that gray color coming out from underneath. Okay, now this area right here, we have another section of a mount that we've got to put in here, but you still, that's why we have to put the snow in first, and then we'll block that in here in just a minute. We'll finish that next week. I think, I think we can do this in one more session, finish this if we do things right. Okay. Just load this here. See, I just kind of reloaded. One down here. Now we may not even add some of the things that I have in the other one because it's just because it's, well, again, we don't have as much room. But notice how I'm leaving little little drifts and pockets. That's fun to do. Just kind of scumble this in here. Create a little bit of movement. And kind of come up over here and work into your little drifts here. Now this will stay in shadow here because it's being cast from this rock there. <clears throat> now you got to be careful not to get this too wet. Almost got that too wet. Just be careful about that. But you can hear my brush how it's scrubbing. That's a good sign. Sign. <laughs> That's a good sign that you're doing it correctly because you want to hear the scrubbiness. Okay, and see I'm feathering that out. See how it feathers into this? So don't put too much down in here. And we've got a really nice beginning to this. This is really looking good. Okay. Now, we're kind of letting that set. Let's go over here and block this little section of the mountain in here. Let me show you what that is over here on the finished painting. See this little section right here? Okay, it's just in front of this section. So we just kind of come in here and we block that in, just like we did with the other pieces. Uh, if you're not sure where to go with it exactly, you can take your charcoal and you can kind of